what are the maximum and maximal clicks of this graph? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson, and by identifying the maximal clicks, we'll also identify the non-maximal clicks. A little while ago, I did a lesson on maximum and maximal clicks, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you're not familiar with these concepts. I'll leave a link to it in the description. At the end of that lesson, I posed an example problem which was to find the maximum and the non-maximal clicks of this exact graph. And I recently received a comment asking me to go over this example, so let's do it. Let's do a super quick recap. Remember that a click of a graph G is a complete subgraph of G. We'll also often use the term click to refer to the vertex set, of a complete subgraph instead of the subgraph itself. In this lesson, we'll use the term both ways an awful lot. For example, we might say that the vertices A, E, B and their adjoining edges make up a click of this graph, or we might just say the vertices A, E and B are a click of the graph. Then a maximum click in a graph G, and we will call this graph G, a maximum click in a graph G is a click with as many or more vertices than any other click in the graph. Whereas a maximal click in a graph G is a click that's not a proper subgraph of another click in G. So a maximal click is a click that may or may not be the biggest click in the graph, but it's not part of a bigger click. And don't worry if you didn't quite understand all of those quick explanations, because I definitely think the example will help. Let's begin by finding the maximum clicks of our graph G. There are a number of ways we could identify the maximum clicks, but let's just walk through the reasoning that I would use to solve this problem. Our graph has six vertices, A through F. So the largest click it could possibly have is a click with six vertices. But that would mean the graph itself is a complete graph, which we see is not the case here. Because, for example, A and C are not adjacent. So, since not every pair of these six vertices is adjacent, the graph certainly doesn't contain a click that has six vertices, otherwise called a six click. So then we can narrow down our search. The next largest possible size of a maximum click would be five vertices. Remember that a click is a complete subgraph, so if this graph has a 5 click in it, every vertex in the 5 click has to be adjacent to the other 4 vertices in the click. Remember that this is what a 5 click would look like. It's a complete subgraph that has 5 vertices. Every vertex in a 5 click, by definition, needs to be adjacent to the other 4 vertices. Thus, in order for this graph to have a 5 click, it would need to have at least 5 vertices that have a degree of at least 4. But there are only 3 vertices in this graph that have a degree of 4 or greater. So we can immediately see that it's not possible for this graph to contain a 5 click. So then the next possibility for maximum click would be a 4 click. Using the same logic we just did, in a 4-click, each vertex would need to be adjacent to the other three vertices in the click. So, for this graph to have any chance of containing a 4-click, it needs to have at least four vertices with a degree of at least three. And we see that this graph has one, two, three, four, five vertices with a degree of at least three. Then we can start to take a closer look at these five vertices and see if there's a 4-click and there are basically two possibilities where this four click might be. Perhaps these four vertices on this four cycle make up a four click, but we can immediately see that they do not. Again, by definition of a click, every pair of these four vertices would need to be adjacent, but we see that D is not adjacent to B. Also, C is not adjacent to E. So these four vertices, E, B, C, and D, cannot make up a four click. The other possibility is that the 4-click consists of three of these vertices on the 4-cycle we just looked at, as well as the vertex F. But again, it turns out this is not a click either, because, for example, D is not adjacent to B. So it's not a complete subgraph. The same sort of thing will be true no matter which three vertices we choose to include with F. Suppose we choose to include D, C, B, and F. Again, D and B are not adjacent. Or if we include E, D, C, and F, we see that E 
and C are not adjacent, so still not a four click. Then finally, we can say, all right, maybe the maximum click in this graph is a three click. And we can immediately verify that indeed that is the size of a maximum click in this graph because this graph does contain a three click. The click consisting of the vertices A, B, and E is a three click in this graph. Every pair of these three vertices is adjacent. Thus, since we just went through the process of verifying that no bigger clicks exist, we know that the maximum size of a click in this graph is three. This sort of graph structure, three vertices that are all adjacent to each other, is often called a triangle for obvious reasons. So every triangle in this graph G is a maximum click. And we see that there are many maximum clicks in our graph G. Because of how small this graph is, you probably could have found its maximum clicks more quickly by using a less structured approach. But hopefully that example shows you a structured approach you can use that gives you watertight reasoning to find the size of a maximum click in a graph. In order to find the maximal clicks in this graph, let's instead point out all of the non-maximal clicks and then every other click will be maximal by definition. Also, notice that by definition, every maximum click is also a maximal click, because if it were not, it could be extended to a bigger click, and thus it wouldn't be maximum. So all of our maximum clicks are also maximal. All right, now let's talk non-maximal clicks. Remember our definition of click. It's just a complete subgraph. So every edge with its incident vertices is a click. It's a complete subgraph consisting of two vertices. Every pair of the vertices is adjacent. It's just the two of them, and they're one edge. Thus, by definition, any vertex that is incident with an edge is itself a non-maximal click. This vertex A, for example, is a non-maximal click. Because the vertex A itself is a click, a fairly trivial click on a single vertex, but it is a click, Remember that the complete graph on a single vertex is just that, a single vertex with no edges. So a single vertex is a click, but since our vertex is incident with an edge, we could extend the click to contain more than a single vertex. So the single vertex itself has to be a non-maximal click. Thus, since every vertex in this graph is incident with at least one edge, we know that every single vertex in this graph is itself a non-maximal click. Because again, every single vertex is a click and it can be extended to include one of its adjacent vertices to make a larger click, a click with two vertices. We'll be able to apply similar logic to the edges in this graph. Remember that a triangle is also a click. It's a complete graph with three vertices. So if an edge lies on a triangle, then that edge's two end vertices make up a non-maximal click because we could include the other vertex in the triangle to get a larger click with three vertices. I'll say that again. Remember, an edge and its vertices make up a click, a complete graph on two vertices. If an edge lies on a triangle, then the edge and its end vertices do not make up a maximal click because we could extend the click by including the other vertex in the triangle for a click that has three vertices. As it turns out in this graph, every single edge lies on at least one triangle. Thus, in this graph, every single pair of adjacent vertices also make up a non-maximal click. And now we have identified all of the non-maximal clicks of this graph. And we know that because we have addressed every click with one vertex and every click with two vertices. In this graph, if a click has three vertices, then it is a maximum click and thus we're positive that it can't be extended and so it's gotta be maximal. So in this particular graph, the only maximal clicks are the ones that have three vertices, which also happen to be maximum clicks. But that, of course, will not always be the case. Just to quickly adjust this example, suppose we have another edge joining the vertex A to some other vertex G. Then the two vertices G and A would make up a maximal click because they make up a complete subgraph with two vertices, 
and they're not part of any other click. Notice that this edge doesn't lie on a triangle. So again, in this adjusted graph, these two vertices, G and A, would make up a maximal click with two vertices. But in our original graph G, every pair of vertices also lie on a triangle. So all of those pairs of adjacent vertices are non-maximal clicks because they can be extended to include the third vertex of the triangle. So I hope this video helped clear up these definitions and give you some ideas for the reasoning that we can use to find maximal and maximum clicks in a graph. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description. So much for me, there's nothing here to hold on to, do I want to, you turn into everything.